Ricky. It's a joy for me to represent uh, the southern part of the, uh, the state uh, and the great Alabama South District and greet you on the, the occasion of your 24th assembly as well. We just completed ours recently, had a wonderful time, the presence of the Lord. God has some big things in store for the whole state of Alabama and we are enjoying that. Uh, <clears throat> Dr. Cunningham happened to be one of the ones responsible for me coming to Alabama South. And so it's good to see you. You did a good thing. And uh, we're enjoying our ministry in the South. I want to take opportunity in this greeting to express appreciation for the prayers and the concern of so many of you in helping us when uh, Catherine came to visit the Gulf Coast and, and did a devastating work down in Biola Battery. I think it would be interesting to know that uh, along with the uh, Nazarene uh, <coughs> Compassion Ministries that uh, we are continuing to work in the Biola Battery area. Uh, groups are coming, sometimes as many as 100, 150. They're sleeping in our churches and helping not just the Nazarenes, but uh, helping the people that need uh, restoration. Amen. We call it restoring hope. Mm -hmm. We have a hope to give to them as well as fixing their houses. We're sharing with them Jesus. Have a wonderful day. It's great to be with you. Amen. Thank you. I thank God every time I remember you. In all my prayers for all of you, I always pray with joy because of your partnership in the gospel from the first day until now. Being confident of this, that he who began a good work in you will carry it on to completion until the day of Christ Jesus, Philippians 1, 3 through 6. I want to express to you what the Apostle Paul felt when he ministered to the people of Philippi. You're in our prayers. We are in a partnership, and I believe God will complete what he has begun in our hearts. What a privilege to work with you. Our challenge this year has been to build healthy churches on purpose. We thank God that he is helping us in this challenge. Today you will hear more about this. Welcome to all of you who are members and friends of the, this 24th District Assembly of the Alabama North District. We are beginning our 25th anniversary year. The Alabama District uh, was started in 1909 and was divided in, into the North and South Districts in 1983. Welcome to Alabama, Dr. Paul G. Cunningham, General Superintendent, and his lovely wife, Connie Cunningham. Let's give them another hand, would you? Welcome. Welcome our new president of Trebekah Nazarene University, Dr. Dan Boone and his wife Denise Boone. They're not able to be here this morning, but we heard from Dr. Boone last night in the service. We're fortunate today to have Reverend Ken Sutherland as representative of Trebekah Nazarene University. We're fortunate to have such able leaders in the Church of the Nazarene, and we believe God wants to bless us in an unusual way through them. I wish it were possible to thank everyone on the district for all the good things you have done in ministry to others. Your love has been seen in many ways, and I want to thank those who worked so hard with us on the district. I would like for you to stand when I call your name and remain standing until this group is finished. First, my sincere thanks goes to Don Cowan for the help he has given me as Assistant District Superintendent and Leader in New Start Ministries. Thanks to Lionel uh, Alvarado, Hispanic coordinator, for his work in securing and training our Hispanic pastors. Thanks to 9-11, who has moved from Alabama but continues to be a help to us. Thanks to my wonderful wife, Gerilyn, the current district office secretary, for her tireless work. Thanks to Fred Faith, district NMI president, Scott Sessions, district NYI president, and J.W. Johnson, Sunday School Ministries chairman, for all they have done for you and for others worldwide. District Secretary Kyle Poole, his secretary Don Meadows, as well as Margaret Crawford, District Treasurer, have served sacrificially. Show your appreciation to these special people, will you? <laughs> Second, I want to thank 
those who make camp a pleasant and fruitful experience. Dr. Lancaster could not be here, but he's the administrative director of Camp Rolling Hills Conference and Retreat Center. Raymond Clark, is Raymond here today? I'm not sure. Uh, camp Operations Director, and is June Gerald, Camp Treasurer here? I do not see these folks. They're primarily from the South District. We're grateful to you for the years you have invested in our camp, and we have a beautiful camp. Huh? Third, we appreciate so much though, for those who serve as zone coordinators. Please stand and remain standing until I read these names. David and Tina Edwards, the Birmingham Zone. Aaron and Stephanie Coffey, the Central Zone. Gerald and Paulette Woods, the Gadsden Zone. Gary and Janita Tatum, Quad Cities Zone. Lewis and Tracy Martin, uh, Tennessee Valley Zone. Fred and Francis Montgomery, Walker County Zone. Thank these people, will you? Appreciate these people very much. Fourth, those who collect the statistics for Sunday school should get a special crown in heaven. Some of you have made their job impossible. <laughs> this year, we're turning over a new leaf in Sunday school attendance reporting. And all the people said, Amen. Amen. Find someone in your church who is dependable and let them call in to the zone chairperson each last Sunday of the month, your statistics. Here are your Sunday School Zone chairpersons. Please stand as I call your name. Birmingham Zone, Don Studder. Central to Zone, James McGraw. Gadsden Zone, Gerald Woods. Quad City Zone, William Bonney. Tennessee Valley Zone, Gail Bermod. And Walker County Zone, Fred Montgomery. Let's give them a hand of appreciation. <laughs> Fifth, I would not be able to do my job were it not for the advisory board. What a wonderful group of folks these are. Haskell Tinker, please stand and remain standing. Aaron Coffey, Carol Smith, Randy Crawford, Moody Davis, Bill Davis, Jimmy Lee, and Sam Michaels, our secretary. Praise God for these men who go the extra mile to help make this a great district. Give them a hand. <laughs> there are many more people than these who guide, lead, pray, serve, encourage, plan, work, and minister to countless numbers of people that only the Lord knows about. Will all our present pastors, would you please stand? All the present pastors and keep standing. Give them a hand. Stay standing if you will. Just remain standing. And will all the ministers who are retired and assigned working in university or assisting in any church in any capacity, would you please stand, all of you, who are helping in different areas? You may be seated. Will all, all those who are laymen stand? not do without you. What a partnership. Together we can do what God called us to do. Our challenge for 2006-07, this past year we have emphasized building healthy churches on purpose and we will continue to strive for that. This year we want to connect hearts and hands in our Alabama North. We are a team. No team wins that does not connect with the others on the team. The tackle on the football team is as valuable and important as the, as the quarterback. The kicker is as important as the linebacker. Teams that win connect hearts. Their hearts are focused on the same outcomes. And they like each other, too. This is known as agenda harmony. Teams that win connect hands for the task that must be done. Much of our work is hard work and demands our best. The teams that win understand that they must improve their task or they will lose. Let's join our hearts and hands for a fruitful year. Let's seek each other more than once a year. Let's plan together and pray together and work together to revive God's mission for us on the Alabama North District. And I say before I get into this part that I had no idea what our general superintendent was going to say, but it fits together beautifully. Mark 4, this is what the Lord gave me. 1 through 20 is the basis for our challenge. Jesus describes four soils, types of soils, and these represent four types of hearts. 
The hardened soil cannot receive the seed because it's too difficult for it to develop roots. Pastors, if you sense the soil of your heart getting hard, the romance of ministry fading, the work unfulfilling, then hear the word of the prophet when he says, Break up your unplowed ground, for it is time to seek the Lord until he showers righteousness on you. Hosea 10, 12. Our prayer is that in this assembly you will seek the Lord and break up the unplowed ground of your heart so that your, you and your call will be renewed. The second soil is very, is, the very, is very receptive to the word, but has little depth so it fades quickly when persecution and pressure come. Pastors, persecution comes even within the church. I challenge you to go deeper. If you take care of the roots of your life, the Lord will take care of the fruit. John 15, 16. Develop your prayer life. This will not be automatic. You must work at it. Read, read, and read some more to develop your soul. Fall in love with the church again. The third soil describes some people in the church today. This soil is good soil, but it is fruitless. The seed grows, but nothing develops out of it. It is soil that has allowed many competing interests to take over. Cares, worries, concerns about this life have become the focus. God and his mission are on the back burner. I think we need to go through the soil of our heart and pull up the weeds. Most of you know how to do that in your garden. Today, God is asking us to do that on the inside of ourselves. The fourth soil is fruitful. This person has avoided hardness, shallowness, and distractedness. This person has not succumbed to littleness, bitterness, meekness, selfishness, and unconcern. This, they take serious for the mandate of the master to win the world for Jesus. These people exist. There are some in every church. They reproduce 30, 60, and even 100 times what was sown in their life. They are in the missions on the local, district, and general church levels. They love the church. Pray for the pastor. Love everyone. Encourage everyone. And they even like the DS and the GS. <laughs> this is an internal challenge. Now we want to share with you the minimal goals of our district that arise out of this challenge. One, that every church receive new Nazarenes equal to 6% of last year's morning worship attendance. The district goal is 500 new Nazarenes. Secondly, that every church have a 5% increase in Sunday school and worship attendance. District goal is Sunday school 4,000 and worship 5,000. Three, that every church gives 16% of their income to others through the fair share plan approved for this district. District goal, 100% of fair share budget paid in full. Four, that every church develop a system of giving to pay the World Evangelism Fund. District goal is 100% of the World Evangelism Fund paid in full. Five, that every church have a children's evangelistic effort each year. Our goal is that every church can be involved. Sixth, that every church pray about and discuss planning a new church in their area with the help and advice of the district missional strategy team. District goal, launched three churches in 2006 and 7, three the next year, and four the next. Ten by the end uh, of our year, which will be 2009. We can meet these goals if we place priority on them. Whatever we emphasize to the church, that is what we will accomplish. You can develop a ser sermons around the, each of these goals. Show your church that God is interested in these things too. Present these six goals to your church board and then your church. Tell them this is the mission God has given to all of us, just not just a few of us. Our record this year is less than stellar. We cannot have another year like this one, statistically. Last year, we broke financial records and numerical records, and I challenge you to do it again. The district awards, first of all, the Outstanding Buddy Church Award. This award is uh, awarded those churches who assist other churches, and last night you heard about this, in paying fair share and world evangelism fund. By, in other words, sending in 500 or more dollars for a church that is struggling. And I read it just parenthetically this morning from 2 Corinthians chapter 8, verses 13 and following, where Paul demonstrates his very principle. 
that when you're having a good year, it'd be good to help those who are having a less than good year and uh, being a buddy church. Secondly, the district superintendent's award, there are listed there, caring for kids, and the New Start Award. I hope and pray that all of us, all of us, will seek to achieve these awards. The names that we shared last night, we will not share again, but if your name is on the list, Outstanding Buddy Church, District Superintendent's Award, Caring for Kids Award, would you please stand if your name is on that list? We want to give you a hand of appreciation again this morning. Please stand. Gentlemen, ladies, thank you very much. And the General Superintendent's Growth Award. We do not have anyone qualified this year for the award, but I believe there will be some in the 2006-07 year. We presently have 66 churches on the district. There's no reason we cannot have 76 by 2009. This is our prayer, and I call on you to pray with us. New churches born in prayer are God's greatest weapon against Satan's devices. Let's take Alabama North for God. Amen. 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 The result of your labor, we share it again with those who received new Nazarenes. They are there in front of you. But I would like for these pastors to stand again and let's thank them for their service to Christ and His church for these who have received a good number of new members this year. Let's give them a hand. Pastors, would you please stand if your name is on that board? And again, the top ten in worship, we will leave that with you. And in Sunday school as well, we're going to uh, also give you that, and that's for your benefit. The next page is Sunday school percentage gain so that small churches can be shown for the growth they've had. Those percentage gains are there for you. And then budgets paid in full. Uh, last night, the pastor told me that his church, I believe Pleasant Grove, who went uh, really helping in the catastrophe of the Katrina hurricane, uh, for six months were pouring their monies into that, and now they have completed paying those six months of district budget, and the pastor told me that just last night they finished that up so you can add Birmingham Pleasant Grove to that list. And there are the folks who have stood by the stuff, and I trust that you'll, you'll realize that when you yourself are giving a tithe, that it's not good to spend that money and then try to catch up. The best thing to do is when you receive it, to give it. And the best thing for you to do is the 16% figure minus the deductions and send it in. Thank you so much for all you churches. Churches who pay their budgets in full, pastors, will you please stand? And some of the entrants are here as well in some of these churches. Let's give them a hearty hand of appreciation. The total amounts raised are there in front of you from each church. These are all the monies given, and some of these are records for some of the churches, and we praise God for that. The next page is financing the mission described there for you in the last three years. We have changes in the numbers, but we haven't computed all of them. She just received, as I said, checks even last night to know exactly where we are, but we will get that to you, but that's almost where we are uh, in giving in these areas. And uh, if your church decides not to give your fair share, which of these should we cut? Should we cut world evangelism? Should we cut district fair share? Should we cut pensions and deliverance? Some churches say they will give only 10% instead of 16%. If you do that, I ask you again, which of these do we cut? That means that from you, we receive 6% less than we need. We are not asking you on the local level for a tithe. Would you, if you underline one sentence, would you underline that one? We're not asking you for a tithe. We're asking you to finance a movement of God in this part of the world. I read recently, a few years ago, the Sandinistas in Central America, when they were in power in Nicaragua, a priest who wrote this book said they gave 37% of their income to their movement. And all we're asking is 16. Isn't that nice of us? 
I believe that God would be pleased if we give our best. And I believe in that. Local church highlights. Here they are. Very quickly, Albertville. Pastor Dave Rosile was elected to serve as police chaplain of the Albertville Police Force. This gives him opportunity to minister in a greater way. Now, Albertville Hispanic, with Juan and Rufina Minchu as pastoral team, they are reaching many people for Christ in the Hispanic communion, community. That is the largest uh, Hispanic church we have in the district. And they're right over here. They're going to be ordained tonight, both of them. That's going to be wonderful in service. Anderson First, they're reaching into the needy parts of the community and bringing children uh, to church on their van. They're assisting them in other ways as well. Athens Hispanic, they're seeking to buy property and build a new building for this growing congregation under the leadership of uh, Rufina Mendoza. Barry, they're seeking a pastor. We were sad to lose Carl Mills. Beulah, they're seeking a pastor, but Brother Bill Dent is their interim pastor, and he's here and will be reporting today. Birmingham Sandpoint, we welcome new pastor David Edwards, who's off to a great start. Birmingham, or Bessemer First, sold their building, and proceeds will be used to possibly start a new church in McCollum, Hoover, Birmingham, and or Gunnersville. Boaz First, they're seeking a pastor since Terry and Gloria Flummer moved to Robertsdale on the Alabama South District. Bowie, after 24 years of service from Haskell and Sharon Tinker's pastor, this church is seeking a pastor. Church at Mercy Hill, Barry and Janice Stevens have accepted the call as pastor to this church. It will be their second time to pastor Mercy Hill. Pastor and people are excited. Call them first. Pastor Aaron Coffey states they have over 700 people present in closing service of upper basketball. 43 wrote on a card they accepted Christ in that service. Their building... Uh, on a normal Sunday is packed, and I can assure you that's true. I witnessed it. Decatur First, Virgil and Annis Crisp uh, are, have accepted the call. They indicate they're having great services with all the field. In Fairview, Pastor James McGraw says the church is praying about adding on their present facility that they might minister in the greater outreach. They had a big year this year. Dr. Philip Sessions, the new pastor, says at faith that God is blessing their church in spite of the fact that it burned down. Churches are giving them assistance from everywhere. You may want to help them too. I believe God is going to do uh, miraculous things for this church. Pray for them. Gardendale, they continue to minister to 300 children through their school. They're also raising money to finish their building. I can't wait to have a district assembly in Gardendale. Won't that be nice too? Grace Chapel, Dr. Lewis Harbison, the official pastor, and doing well. Huey Town First, the new pastor, Randy and Robin and Scott, are doing well in the new assignment their first church pastor. Huntsville Calvary, Ralph Brown, the new pastor, says these people are uh, reaching out to their immediate neighborhood and they're seeing people get saved. Praise God. Here at Huntsville first, Scott Lowry, the new pastor, has finally made it to the promised land here in Alabama. <laughs> Welcome to them. Huntsville Southeast, a wonderful congregation seeking a new pastor, says interim pastor Norman Rigby Sr. Doing well. Uh, Jasper First, they're seeking a new pastor and pray that God will send them the right person. Mary's Chapel, they are happy with a new pastor, Gary and Jolita Taylor. They're off to a good start. Nauvoo, the dear beloved pastor, Joe Ben Cable, went to do the Lord April 14th. The memorial service was a celebration of a strong witness to his family, church, and community. Pray that God will help them as she adjusts. This church is in need of a new pastor. Brother Dave Ferris is preaching to them as interim at 8.30 on Sunday morning. New Hope Leeds, they're seeking a new pastor. Brother Roy Nix is the interim. This church has great potential, thanks to the mentors for their service to New Hope. New Life Hansel, these folks are, need our prayers as they seek a new pastor. Nitrate City, they've broken ground for their new building. It will be one of the largest church buildings in Nitrate City. Roland Hargrove, by vocational pastor, is leading this church to growth. Sardis, they feel they found a new pastor, David Ferris. He is presently their interim. He is preaching at Nauvoo as well. Thanks, David. Scottsboro, Ken, and Hope Norris are the new pastor family. They're doing well. Continue to pray for their son, Wesley, who's had heart surgery just three weeks ago. <laughs> Sheffield First, they're seeking a new pastor and pray for these wonderful folks. Shiloh, Randy, and Margaret Crawford have been interim pastors. These people are seeking a new pastor. Union Hill, Pastor Gerald Woods says the church is moving forward with the Lord's help. They are praying about some expansion on their property. In the meantime, they are winning people to the Lord. 
These are only a few places where God is working out His will in the lives of people. Let us know through email what is happening at your church. And that's a new address for some of you that don't know our email. That's a new one. My personal accountability to you, preach with an interpreter to the combined Hispanic congregations twice. Preach to every church this year, 63 times uh, in all. Conducted 54 board meetings with 27 churches. Conducted eight pastoral reviews, drove 52,000 miles. My phone says I have made and received over 4,000 phone calls. Attended three funerals, had 32 personal meetings with pastors, planned and directed the ministers and major retreat and Christmas dinner, attended the REACH conference at Jasper First, Dr. David Graves, relocated the district office to my home, attended the Alabama South District Assembly, spoke at three zone pastors meetings, attended three DS conferences, Santa Fe, Irvine, California, and Gatlinburg, conducted district calendar meeting, led five district advisory board, Meetings attended with Don Callan a Larry McCain conference, Changing the Climate. Attended the district missional strategy team with Larry McCain and led the second meeting. Attended lay retreat and led two seminars. Attended leadership in St. Louis with Don Callan, Charles Perkins, and Michael Stern. This was formerly known as the Small Church Institute. Attended general convention and assembly in Indianapolis. Conducted two weddings and was part of two funerals. Attended the week of a uh, full week of camp meeting, attended nominated committee meetings, three finance committee meetings, attended district children's council meeting, two NYI district council meetings where we elected Scott Sessions as president, met with the TNU board two times, we elected Dan Boone as president of the university and attended the inauguration of the president, attended revival at Huntsville Southeast with evangelist Elaine Pettit, Attended six nights of excellence conducted in six different churches. Visited various hospitals across the district, ministering wherever needed. Gerald has led numerous seminars wherever she's been invited. She also spoke in Oklahoma, Kentucky, and Northern Michigan. She attended the Beth Moore Conference and led two seminars at Labor Retreat. Since January, Gerald has assumed the duties of district office secretary. Besides these things, we have prayed for you that God will bless you and your churches. I finished, or, or I have fished, excuse me the beautiful Huntersville Lake once. Thanks to Brother Randy Crawford who hauled his boat 100 miles from Killen, Alabama so I could fish. And he had, he's the only man I ever saw stand on the front of the boat and said, they're right here, they're right here, and we threw in and they were. I continue to pray for you all, study everything that would improve my ministry, give my tithe and offering to the churches that I visit, and have faithfully fulfilled my duties as district superintendent. We love you all and can't wait to see what God is going to do in this 25th anniversary year of our district. Remember to connect hearts and hands in Alabama North. Let's set some new records of growth and start some much needed new churches. Will you join me in this endeavor? If you will, say amen. Amen. I'm acknowledging him in great way.
you want to catch hold of his vision, not ours. And it's probably bigger than anything we could dream of. But if he invites us to come along with him, he'll be there to support us. And I still want to be accountable to God for my own neighborhood, still walk the streets of my neighborhood, praying over the homes that we live by. And God is working, and we thank him and praise him. And we just challenge all of you to do that. Just walk your street, pray over the houses, and God will begin to bring in a harvest right where we live. Thank you for your goodness to us and all of your love and appreciation, your cards and encouragement. We love you dearly. I love you folks, and I like you too. <laughs> I like being around you. I love coming to your churches. I, I, uh, I really envy the pastors because you have a great, great privilege of molding people week after week, day after day, the same folks. You know their warts and all, and they know them all about you, but you still love them anyway and made them. And we have a great pastoral team. We have 12 churches open presently. We have three churches making decisions. So in January, I just celebrated the fact that for one week, we went without having an open church. But the devil was working. And within a week, we had 14 open. And uh, so I promised the Lord I would never celebrate the fact that I did not have any churches open. <laughs> Because the devil heard me say it, and, and I tell you, he has really, uh, he's really uh, helped us uh, to work harder. So you guys pray for us, and if your church is open, continue to pray. Let's have a great year together. Let's, let's see something just marvelous and powerful and wonderful happen. Thanks for your support for us. God bless you. Custom to give a love offering to your district superintendent and his wife. That's a good idea. We